Hello students, today I will tell you about the Indian Contract Act 1872 and in this I will discuss with you the history of Indian Contract Act. So as we all know that prior the enactment of this act we will govern by the Britishers and this particular act were made in the era of Britishers. Now Indian Contract Act it was came in 1872 and forced on the 1st September 1872. The main source of this Indian Contract Act is the Indian laws particularly the laws regulating the contracts in India and when this act was made it originally consists of 266 sections. Now we, uh, we will discuss about what is the contract. Contract in the simplest definition a promise which is enforceable by law. A promise may be to do something or to refrain from doing something. The making of a contract requires the mutual assent of two or more persons. One of them ordinarily making an offer and other accepting. But here I will tell you about the history of contract like in the first phase means when Britishers came to India they came around in 1600 and they started governing India through the medium of charters and different regulations. During the British era they made different charters which regulate the Indians means if anything is going on in different different areas then these charters will tell the rules and regulations. By the Regulating Act of 1773, Supreme Court was found. Uh, Supreme Court of Judicature was found in Calcutta, which replaced the Mayor's Court, because earlier Mayor's Court served as the highest court of British from the period of 1774 to 1862, till the High Court of the Calcutta was established under the Indian High Courts Act. And before the advent of this Indian Contract Act. The English law was applied in the presidency towns of Madras, Bombay and Calcutta under the charter of 1726 which was issued by the King George I to the East India Company. Uh, before 1872 there was the English common law which was applied to Indian citizens means if anything is going on between uh, the uh, any persons if they are doing the contract then they will govern by the English common law after but this English common law leading many inconvenience because in India we are separated in different religions basically Muslims and Hindu and firstly when this act was not present then we will govern by the personal laws means if there are two parties if they are particularly from the same religion then Muslim law applicable on the Muslims, Muslims personal law and Hindus personal law applicable on the Hindus. But if in case one party is Hindu and other party is Muslim then the defendant personal law will be applied. Now for phase second, phase second this came by, uh, by 1872 and 1929. Phase second start the enactment of this particular act. If we talk about the Indian Contract Act, I already told you that it originally comprised of 266 sections which is, uh, which is divided further into different groups like section 1 to 75 talks about the general principles of contract, 76 to 123 talks about the sales of goods. 124 to 147 talks about the indemnity and guarantee. 148 to 181 talks about the bailment and pledge. 182 to 238 talks about the contract of agency. And 239 to 266 talks about the partnership. When this contract act was made, this was comprised of 266 section which deals in different types of things. Now phase third after the 1930 because originally when this act was made it 
also cover the whole area which deals in the immovable property but due to the inconvenience of this indian contract act which was not able to deal successfully in the uh, area of uh, sale of immovable things than in 1930 section 76 to 123 which relating to the sales of goods were repealed and a separate act was enacted which called the sales of goods act and after the two years in 1932 a separate act was was enacted for the partnership so this act was called as the partnership act which comprises of section 239 to 266 now i am concluding my history because by analyzing the development of contract is concluded that britishers try to codify the law to bring in uniformity but they also tried to incorporate the personal laws of the different religions groups unless they are in contrary to the main law as they realized the underlying principle of personal laws so we can say that in the british era this act was flourished this was made and this was made applicable to all over the india thank you